I'm so annoyed because I checked the weather last night and it literally said heavy snow. And I was like, amazing, this is gonna be such a dream to wake up to. And I've woken up, I literally looked out the window and it was sunshine. Well, I mean, you saw my, um, my Snapchat and the little Mark. Oh, have you seen the Marco Polo? I don't, I've not watched them yet. It was lovely. It was like proper snow. We went to Hyde Park and everything, and people were like sledging. And by the time we walked home, it was like mush. Mm. Well, at least you got some snow. Some of us have had nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and I've seen it literally every time I go on Instagram. I just see people like posting about the snow, and I'm just like, are we the only place that has not had any snow? <laughs> I'm starting to feel victimised, people. <laughs> I I know. Have I done something wrong? I don't know. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Im. And I'm Evie and this is our podcast. Let's, Let's be, be honest. honest. <laughs> um, don't forget you can find our podcast on all your usual platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Pocket Casts. And if you want, you can even watch us on YouTube at Im and Evie, Let's Be Honest. Feel free to tell your friends about our little podcast and leave a review down the bottom on how we're doing. And if you want to stay up to date with everything that we're doing, then you can also follow us on Twitter at Im and Evie. So without further ado, episode three. Yeah. How are we? We're doing okay. Love surviving, that. getting through, you know? Surviving and thriving or just surviving? Just surviving, to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Sunday, everyone. I know. <laughs> um, I think... Evie's a bit bummed that um, London has had some glorious snow this afternoon. And, and and what's the weather your end? Well, listen, I'm not complaining because it's sunny and that is just a treat. But I would rather snow. When everyone else up and down the country, I feel like, has got snow. Literally. You know, but anyway, we move on. It's fine. Hopefully we'll get more snow soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It's this time of year that we normally get snow, though. I love I know. it. Although, we did have, a couple of years back, we did have the Beast from the East, and that was end of February. What a throwback. I know. Oh my word, you were in Norfolk, weren't you? I know. Ugh. What I would do to be back at university. Oh, I know, I do miss it, actually, but that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> um, so, what are we talking about this week? This week, we are doing, very apt for our situation, we are doing our favourite podcasts. We love a good podcast. We I've do. been getting into them in the past like two years so much more than I ever used to. And I always used to hear like, oh, have you heard about this podcast or this podcast? And it always brush it off. I'd be like, oh, why wouldn't you just listen to music? Yeah. Um, but no, I've been loving them. It was, um, I, I went through a breakup in third year and it was how I like got through the daily the daily life like James Acaster did I think he did an album every week um and then did a podcast about that and I just started doing like a podcast every day that's game nice. changer I do feel like because we're only going to cover I think two podcasts each mm-hmm. um and I do feel like if you if you missed last week's episode last week we did our favorite tv shows and Imogen and I've been talking about it since and we feel like we didn't scratch the surface so, not even a little bit no so i feel like that's going to be the same with this episode because we've kind of limited ourselves to about half an hour episodes because we don't want to bore you we don't want to like keep you from your normal daily life um so we we don't have much time to get in too much detail and particularly with last week we didn't want to give away too many spoilers and stuff so um but if you do want us to do more in-depth things about these podcasts or do another one where we talk about like a more specific genre of podcast like our favorite crime our favorite like celebrity Lovely. influencer ones we can totally do that so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we'll see but we, do you want to so, start do you want to start with one of yours Ooh, the pressure so <laughs> i'll kick off with um with one that um henry actually introduced me to and it's the off menu podcast um with james acaster and ed gamble um so it was a running joke at university that I was obsessed with knowing what people were eating for dinner. I think it was a daily question I used to ask Evie all the way at the other end of the country, like, yeah. 
hey, you know, what's for lunch? Um, yeah. What's for dinner? What's for <laughs> breakfast? And you'd be like, Imogen, it's the same thing every single time. Yeah, just rotated, <laughs> like, the same five meals. <laughs> Literally. And so they get, um, like, a famous person, normally comedians, to go through their dream meal. Um, but naturally... They're comedians, they go on tangents, they tell you stories and anecdotes and little bits. And it's just like a feel good, just want a bit of something in the background. You want to feel part of something. Almost like you're like a fly on the wall. Um, I normally listen to it like trying to do my lockdown walks on like a walk of Hyde Park and I listen to their favourite meal. Also love it for a nice little food trip. Get some inspo of you know, where all these different celebrities think is the best place in London or Bristol or LA or New York because we got to manifest those dreams, Evie. Yeah, we do. Um, so that's like a nice feel-good one. That's nice. I'd never um, thought about it giving inspiration for meals. That's quite good. Oh, my word, yeah. And they've got their poor producer um, has to write down all the names of the restaurants. And that's some nice people... publicity for the restaurants right oh my goodness <laughs> some people name drop so many restaurants like there was um terry hatcher who is obsessed with food i love her she name dropped like 24 plus restaurants and i was like normally it's like three or four restaurants and he just has to write them on the website and um that particular episode oh my word he i like had to write an essay I love her. That's quite a big like person to get on because I don't know who right? James Acaster or who was the other one you said? Ed Gamble. <laughs> I don't know who, no offense if you're listening, James or Ed. I don't know who you are, but you probably don't know who we are, so it's fine. But that's quite a big name for those of you who don't know. This is Desperate Housewives Terry Hatcher, right? Desperate Housewives Terry Hatcher was on the Bake Off, so we know she likes her food. And I didn't quite appreciate how much she likes food. Like, we're talking Michelin star restaurants, was obsessed with the whole, like, atmosphere, um, taste Were they restaurants in London? Because obviously she's American. So they were, like, dotted around the world. There were some shout outs for Cornwall. Love that. Um, and then her daughter goes to a really small niche university. So a couple in that town. And there was quite a few for, like, LA, Sydney, New York. She really knows her stuff. Wow. She really knew her stuff. But I have to admit, it wasn't my favourite episode because it was just so... Like, you were being bombarded and she hadn't taken the time. Because she obviously loves food so much, she hadn't taken the time to really, like, narrow down what her dream meal would be. Whereas, although not my favourite episode, Joel Domit was very clear on, like, what he wanted. That was probably was quite so controversial. Funny. <laughs> it was brilliant, but he's very much, like, gym-goer, protein shake, um, classic food. So I don't think people that really love their food would appreciate what was on his menu. <laughs> um, but, yeah, give that a little listen. Really, really like that. And um, the kind of main premise is if they say a secret ingredient, they get kicked out of the dream restaurant. What? Yeah. So, like, for example, if the secret ingredient was um, was lemonade and it came to the drink choice and you were like, oh, I just really like a glass of lemonade, they'd just be like, sorry, Evie, you said the secret ingredient. You're not allowed to, like, stay. Oh, my gosh. Um, So there is, like, an element of they might say something that has been chosen as, like, a no-go situation. And who chooses the secret ingredient? Uh, James Acaster and Ed Gamble. Okay. But they don't necessarily agree on, like, whether they both like it or both dislike it. There have been a few, like, um, like, Liver was one of them. And Ed Gamble was like, it's okay. James Acaster was like, no thank you, honey. Oh, okay. So they pick something that they don't like as the secret mm-hmm. ingredient. Got me. So I feel like my podcasts are going to be very chatty, very, like, easy listening. I feel like Evie's are going to be a little bit more intellectual. <laughs> we've, chosen, we've chosen quite different vibes, which is good because then people listening can have a wide range of things, so... So true. So hit me with your first one. What's your go-to? Okay, so because mine are more 
um I guess kind of niche and specific I have I'm gonna read you the descriptions of them Um, Well, I'll read you the description of the first one first. Um, So it's one that I'm currently listening to. And it's called... So, okay, here's the thing. So there's three seasons of it, technically. Okay. If you want to call them seasons. Um, And the kind of overarching name is the Lovecraft Investigations. And that... Okay, so it's an audio drama, first of all. Um, (laughs) Sounds so Radio 4. (laughs) It is, it's BBC Radio 4. <laughs> it is. I love that you've said that. Um, My so, grand listens to Radio 4 at the weekend and she told me they did like a reading of Barack Obama's autobiography and all these different things. You would love things. that, you love Obama. I really would, but it just makes me laugh that you've definitely gone down a sophisticated route. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so good because I... I don't listen to many audio dramas. Like, I've, I can't really remember one I've listened to like this before. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, and because it, it's so good. Like, they literally go out and record it, like, in areas that will sound like what they're trying to recreate. No way! Yeah, so it's... Yeah, it's so good. Um, but anyway, let me explain. So, it's called The Lovecraft Investigations, and it's based off of H.P. Lovecraft. Ooh. Who... Let me just double check. I'm pretty sure is an author. Hold on. Yeah, he was an American writer of, as Wikipedia says, weird and horror fiction. Yeah. So anyway, so these are based off of his books. And it's like an investigation into like witchcraft and things like that. But the way it's done is it's basically two people called Matthew Hayward and Kennedy Fisher they're the two main like characters as it were and they are hosting their own podcast where they look into these investigations um obviously it's fictional so like it's not a real podcast that you can go and listen to them yeah do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. um so that's kind of basically what it's about but the first one the first season is called the case of Charles Dexter Ward and it's about this missing boy um and his disappearance uh and then as you go along you obviously they're investigating it and they find stuff out so when that season ends they found out this new information and so the next season is a continuation of this disappearance because they find out more information and it starts getting weird um because it's very like it is sort of like witchcraft i wouldn't say paranormal but it's just kind of like it's weird. Not your standard murder mystery investigation. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's like, so you can't just dip in and out. You do have to like follow. Yeah, you have to have listened to every single season to understand okay. what's going on. But I just love it because it's. It, I've never listened to a podcast like it, and it's so well done. I mean, it's obviously it's a BBC production, so it's gonna be of good quality. Um, but <laughs> shout out to the BBC. Yeah, shout out. Give me a job. Um, <laughs> um and it's got some really great actors in it um i don't know if you know nicola walker i don't but she's give in, me a sprinkling she's in of unforgotten more. and the split unforgotten the crime one i was telling you about we've both seen it is she the mum in the split yeah <gasps> oh my word no i do know who you're talking about so she's Ooh, in it. big dog i know so she's in it and i believe her husband is is in it and plays the main character. I think they're married in real life because he's an actor as well, I think. No so, way! Yeah, and so, yeah, it's a great cast, great production. Like, the sound, whoever does their sound, is incredible. And, like, the dedication that, even though it's an audio drama, they go out to locations with microphones and whatever and record to try and get the most incredible sound I that's going to fit that. with the drama. It's really well done, so... If you like audio dramas and kind of mystery, like weird kind of vibes, then then you will like that. Ooh, I don't feel like I've sold it very well one. because I can't quite describe the stuff that happens because it's like weird cults and like. See, I'm what I'm hearing is almost like. It is like a crime novel being unwritten or like a classic BBC drama almost unfolding but instead of before your eyes before your ears yeah and the way they do it like the two actors obviously who play the two people that are doing a podcast like 
they they play it like they're doing a podcast and they literally are like so I'm now walking into this building and this is supposedly where so and so lived and it looks like this and blah 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 like it's like you're listening to an audiobook yeah like a <gasps> someone doing a podcast but it's all fictional do we not just love you know what sorry a bit of a tangent here and it's not a podcast I have really started getting into um they're supposed to be listened to right before bed and it's like this is Sunday morning antiques and it's like ASMR but it's like supposed supposed to help you get to sleep and they're like an hour long and it's like and this is rainy day antiques and he tells this story about rainy day antiques and I kid you not the only time I've listened to it I was out like a lamp like five minutes I didn't even know what he talked about but it is just so satisfying for your brain just to be like oh this is like a nice zen you got rain pattering on the window and you just like you go into your happy cocoon place and you just fall asleep see i've tried those things and i find that i i'm trying to listen to it too much so my brain is like overworking to try and make sure i'm paying attention to what's going on and so i can't fall asleep see did you ever listen to tapes when like audiobooks when you were a kid to go to sleep no See, I think that's where this is why it worked so well for me. We used to listen to Horrid Henry on tape. Um, oh, what else? That's the Famous throwback. Five. I, I used to listen to the Famous Five tapes, but just to like on car journeys and things. No, these were specifically put on for Kieran and I. Kieran's my brother. Um, and mum used to come in and turn them off or the cassette would run out and by that stage like you would be asleep yeah but the famous five is like mysteries so like would you not want to pay attention to like keep in the mystery clearly not i had to reread <laughs> them when i was like <laughs> older <laughs> to actually find out what happened that's funny okay so yet again yet again my second podcast of choice and actually it was a work recommendation from two girls who are about my age it's called the girls bathroom shout out to Sophia and Chintzia um so they are two girls 22 23 and it is on the idea that when you go on a night out the best advice you're ever given is from girls in bathrooms Mm -hmm. very weird concept for guys to get their heads around because obviously you don't talk in the bathroom whereas i think the best talks i ever have are in a bathroom over the stool to evie (laughs) over to a random girl where you compliment her lipstick and when (laughs) the drinks have been flowing your tongue is a bit looser to randos who you've never even spoken to before and I mean, I've given advice to girls in tears about, like, what to do with this boy that's not being nice and blah, blah, blah. But it is just this advice, and it's in this classic, like, girls just trying to big up girls or help guys, and it's, like, girl talk. So it is just a very light-hearted space where you just... People, they just discuss and, and advise in the best way possible... But I find it so funny because obviously it's so easy to give advice when you don't know the person. But I'm sat there and I'm like, if Evie came to me with this dilemma, it would be so much harder to just give you like a blanket advice. But because you have emotional involvement, that's why. Oh my God, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But they balance each other so well because if one of them takes a really empathetic route, the other one will be like, well, no, because this is like blanket situation. This is what it is. And would you be comfortable with that? No, yes, whatever. Um, So there have been some proper intense situations like my Tinder date's about to be a dad, what do I do? Um, Or um, my BFF has broken up my relationship, disgust. And it's all these different situations and it is like, whoa. But because it's someone else's drama, you can just listen to it and be like, thank God that isn't my life. (laughs) And also enjoy the advice being given. But what I love doing is A, bringing up the situations with Evie and seeing what her take would be on it. And then also asking Henry or my brother, like, do guys actually think that's okay? Like, why would a guy just want to be exclusive and not date? Like, why? What is the thinking behind that? And, you know, 
why would a guy want to sleep with two best friends like is that not gross and all this different stuff because obviously boys and girls come at problems in different ways and um and one of them was like um you know would you sleep with the same person as your best friend and I was like ew no that is disgusting Mm -hmm. that's like incest yeah and I know so many guys that would have been like yeah and why like yeah but guys are so that's just where guys and girls are so different in that situation oh my god um because with girls so I feel like is... there's like a moral code being broken it's... there oh my word right mm-hmm. and not even like you know what it wouldn't even have to be my best friend i think even if it's just someone ex- you're like an acquaintance with or went to school with right. i'd be a bit like okay mm. like, yeah cross the line there. so true um especially if there was like it wasn't just like they bumped into someone random in a club mm. and it happened. If there was some sort of a History. natural course to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. No, thank you. Um, so that's another one I really like. Just walking, listening to. Nice bit of escapism. I can't get over um, how different our podcasts are. Like, I'm preparing <laughs> to talk about the next one. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're so different. I mean, it was either that or The Economist, and that is some depressing stuff What's sometimes. That? I've heard of that, but is it like news stuff and politics? It's Yeah, it's like news, it's politics. It's um, for everyone that did A-level economics, which wasn't Evie or I, no. they would have to sign up to the subscription of The Economist, which used to be a magazine, and it would be like current affairs around the globe, um, which I like because it's a bit more in-depth than the news would ever go to and it's definitely more representative of world news because it really annoys me that bbc news never covers things like south america or africa whereas the economist does cover all of that and goes into loads of detail um but that was just a bit of a boring one Mm. (laughs) well my next hit me with your last one is called up and vanished and i feel like i might have told you about this um but it's a true crime podcast um by the way i'm assuming all these podcasts are on spotify yes apple um the one i just mentioned previously is on bbc sounds as well so but anyway so this is called up and vanished and i'm gonna just read it to you because i don't want to get anything wrong about the information because it is true crime so don't want mm-hmm, to like, mispronounce mm-hmm. the names or anything. So <laughs> Up and Vanished is an, an investigative... How do you say that? Investigative... Investigative... Yeah, I think right? that's right. Yeah. I just feel like it's quite wordy. Investigative. Yeah, it is, but it's just, it doesn't flow nicely. Yeah, I know. I like stumbled and I was like, am I saying that right? Anyway, it's an <laughs> investigative true crime podcast hosted by Atlanta filmmaker Payne Lindsay. So there's two seasons so far. In season one, he tackles his first cold case story, the unsolved disappearance of a Georgia high school teacher and former pageant queen, Tara Grinstead. The 11-year-old case remains the largest case file in Georgia history and is still unfolding. Um, And then season two focuses on the disappearance of a young mother, Crystal Reisinger, from a remote mountain town in Colorado. Um, So I'd heard about these two cases before I listened to the podcast, But this podcast is, it's like you're getting a peek. It's almost like you are the investigator because... I love that. Yeah, because he, obviously, as I say, his name's Payne Lindsay and he's a filmmaker. But he goes around and goes to Atlanta and literally records, obviously, I don't know if he tells them he records them, but it sounds very discreet. Conversations with people and things like that. And you literally hear information that has never been heard before i mean these cases obviously one of them the first one i mentioned is a cold case and these people in this town in georgia are so protective and so like private and sketchy about this case Mm -hmm. um because there's elements of a possible police (gasps) cover-up involvement situation right we're gonna have Um, to discuss this afterwards so we don't give any spoilers because i need some more tea oh my gosh it is incredible i could not believe that i was listening to this information because he got so much hate for this from the people in the town because the town were like how dare you come to our town and for sure cry for information but he i mean i won't tell you whether the case gets solved or not but he finds out things that have never been found out before and he basically broke this case open again and 
it's incredible. And is it being investigated still? Um, I'm not going to... Well, do you want me to tell you yes or no? Oh, yeah, because that would... Okay, that no, because I feel like that would ruin it for the viewers if they want to listen to that. Yeah, but... After. after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, <laughs> it's so incredible, and you hear, like... Oh, the information that you hear, it's like you shouldn't be... Like, this is public. Like, everyone yeah. can hear this. And after he started posting it, as I say, he got so much backlash from people in this town of hating him. And But he gained such a reputation for, for you know, the ho- whole rest of the of America and I guess the rest of the world because I'm not in America and I've heard it. And it's it's nuts. It's really But crazy. I guess for the people of Georgia, for, the, for those that aren't, like, covering something up that's sketchy, it is, like, picking at an old scab. Like, mm. they've come to peace with the decision. It was a cold case. Like, they've just, like, left it at the door and those emotions have been, like, almost put in a box. Mm-hmm. And for him yeah. to come along, it is quite, like, emotionally... Yeah. Unsettling for someone to then start, like, digging around in past when you've made your peace with, you know she just died or like it just happened and you processed it for someone to then start going oh but is that actually true it would Mm. be quite upsetting let alone all those people that potentially could be hiding something that has gone on oh that was so cool this is the thing it's like i think it was one of those cases where things just didn't add up and there was clearly people not doing their job right and just things didn't seem right so the fact that he then obviously went and investigated it, I think people were probably so against it because they knew that eventually things would come out. Come out, That yeah, people sure. didn't want to know. And, you mm-hmm. know, anyway. And then I'm, I've am i started listening to the second season uh, as well, which is really good as And well, is the so. second season a cold case as well or is it like a current case? Um, I can't remember. I think they're all fairly recent. I mean, obviously, the the first season is an 11-year-old case, but I guess that's more recent than if it was, like, the 60s yeah, 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 or something. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure. I'd have to... Let me look it up. But the the um, second season... Uh, well, they're both about... Obviously, because it's called Up and Vanish, they're both about missing people who have just disappeared and, you know... I didn't no even trace. register that. Yeah. So the second season... She has been missing since July 13th, 2016. Oh, so super recent. Yeah, and then the other one was she went missing October 22nd, 2005. Whoa. So, yeah. Oh, my word. I love that. You know what, though? I love, and I mainly get it through you, I love hearing about these cases that don't quite add up and you know something iffy has gone on, but, like, they've just been closed because... You know, what else are you going to do? What else can you find out? Because some cases, unfortunately, I do get, like, you just hit a stalemate, don't you? If you Sometimes can't get that little bit of information... And try and keep yeah. going. Mm. Yeah, and give parents, like, unnecessary hope. Like, how Madeline McCann is still being searched for... Mm. Bizarre. But yet that 2016 case closed. I know. Or potentially still open. But yeah. it's an old case. I know. Um, but he's, I mean, he clearly has just shown that you shouldn't dismiss cases just do it. so yeah, yeah, yeah. easily. <gasps> Love that. Yeah, you know what? Really BBC good. Sounds has got some good podcasts, and I never really thought of them. I don't being think that's on BBC Sounds. Place. Is it not? No. The only one that's on BBC Sounds that I've mentioned is the, the previous Lovecraft one. Investigations. Yeah. This one's right. just on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. So. Right, right, right. right. Do you want to do your little icebreaker? Which again, we we should have done that at the start, but it's two weeks in a row we've we've sort of just bypassed it. <laughs> so this week's icebreaker, I was thinking, classic night in, night out. Okay. Interesting. Well, we are in a pandemic, so <laughs> things things post like like pandemic world. Just, yeah, <laughs> my answer is obviously night in because we can't do anything. But if we're talking, okay, see, here's the thing, right? Because we're in a pandemic, though, I, okay, here's some context. I don't really drink. I don't really go out clubbing. I'm not really into that vibe. But I will every once in a while. Like, I'm not stone cold sober 100% of the time. And I'm not, you know, 
just a grandma. <laughs> she um, cuts loose, ladies. <laughs> but once, once in a blue moon, I'll let loose. <laughs> um, and so, because we've been in lockdown for the past year, um, I do feel like I just need to go out and and dance. Do you know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. Listen to some tunes and dance. Absolutely. So, so I do. A part of me is like night out. But if we're talking on a regular, if we weren't in a pandemic, and you said to me, "Would you rather a night in or night out?" I'd probably say night in, unless we're going out for dinner. Then I'll say night out because I'm always down to go out for food. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if we're referring to night out as like clubbing, drinking, yes, then night yes. in. Okay. <laughs> Completely similar answer. Ordinarily, night night in. I love a chill day, love a bit of Netflix. Evie and I, a couple of years ago, God, it is a couple of years ago, on New Year's Eve, made some cookies, made some dinner, just watched the TV on New Year's Eve, and it's probably been one of the best New Year's Eves I've ever had. Yeah, it was a good one. (laughs) Um, But right now, all I want to do is go on a night out. I want to be in a club, packed like sardines, having a great time. (laughs) Sweaty, sticky sticking floors, to the yeah. floor. <laughs> uh, texting someone at like 3 p.m. going, Are we fake tanning? Are we not? <laughs> Are we wearing heels? <laughs> and still not being ready at like 8 o'clock when I'm supposed to be leaving my house. <laughs> Finally, in I think we've been quite good with this part of our podcast. A nice little quote to like tide us round, have a little bit of reflection. So people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. Which apt fitting. They're always very apt, aren't they? We're very good, I must say, at picking our quotes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) I like that. I think it's a nice one. That would be a good t-shirt quote. Right. Mm. Lovely. We should so start do you wanna... merch <laughs> <laughs> with our quotes on each week. If you want to tell us <laughs> what merch you'd like, yeah. that can be in the pipeline. <laughs> um, so do you want to give everyone a teaser of what's coming next week? Yes. Okay, so next week we're kind of continuing the theme with like entertainment things to keep you you know preoccupied in lockdown so next week we are doing our favorite books love a good book yeah which we've, really got, about. we've got a little book club as well so this is we even have. more fitting for us without further ado my love yeah this has been this has been our podcast it certainly has we've made it another week <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> we love consistency <laughs> Right. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.